Okay, given a little bit of background on my history of Bitcoin. What I was leading up to talking about the early point of sale days was that I kind of realized that doing retail payments in like a merchant setting, like in person buying a coffee or something with Bitcoin, it worked okay for the first few years when there was not too much traffic on the network and blocks like your transaction would always make it into the next block and you can RBF like fee bumping and child pays per parent wasn't really happening back then. So double spends were really rare. People would just do like unconfirmed Bitcoin payments and for small like items, it was considered fine not to wait for a block confirmation. But in 2017, when we had the first real spike in price um, up to like 20,000, um, and a lot of usage on the network block started getting full consistently, and a fee market developed. So those uh, unconfirmed payments became infeasible. So we had to start coming up with other scaling solutions. And that was around the time when there was the block size wars. So uh, back in the day, there was this controversial at the time upgrade called segregated witness, which was going to sort of increase the virtual size of blocks, but not do like a hard increase. So it kind of technically allows you to pack more transactions into a block and have bigger blocks, but it's not just like a, you know, a straight increase in the size of each block. So blocks for one megabyte, there are all these proposals to increase them to two megabytes, four megabytes, eight megabytes, or like a scaling system to go up to infinite megabytes. Uh, but segregated witness kind of made them into, I guess you could say four megabytes by moving the signatures of the transactions from like to not count towards how much the transactions take up in a block. And that's like the biggest part of the transaction is the signature. So yeah, that was like an upgrade to the network that was done as a soft fork. So I, I kind of want to talk about the difference of like what a fork is versus an altcoin versus a side chain versus something like lightning, which is not really any of the above. Yes. Might be considered a side chain in a sense, in a technical way, but yeah, I don't know where I would put that is. So a fork is like someone takes Bitcoin and they tweak some of the rules. So um, with Bitcoin, everyone needs to agree on the rules of the network. Uh, they're called the consensus rules because everyone who's running Bitcoin has to be in consensus. All their computers have to be running the same software that when they're validating what transactions are allowed and what blocks are allowed on the network, they have to agree. And just to recap some of the basic rules, uh, like the one megabyte block size would have been one of them. Um, the number of coins issued in a new block, right now it's 6.25 bitcoins get created every block. Um, if your software was trying to say, you know, mine a block and create more than that, it would be considered invalid. Um, the rules of just how transactions are signed, what algorithm is used to provide the signature and all the script code that um, determines what a valid transaction is. All those things are kind of set in stone. And if you start changing your version of the software that you're running on your computer that's running Bitcoin, you could change it and you could get a bunch of other people to change it, but you would then not be in consensus with the rest of the world. So you could have your own little forked network where you know, everyone here in this room could suddenly agree that we're going to change the block reward and we all patch our, our Bitcoin software in the same way and we start issuing, you know, different block reward for any blocks we mine. And we only say, 
that our blocks are valid. And we, we could continue on like that forever. And that could be adapt Bitcoin or Vancouver Bitcoiners Bitcoin. But the market would reject it then. So no one else would want to accept our special Bitcoin probably because it wouldn't technically be the same as the old original Bitcoin that everyone else is still using. So that's like a hard fork. You break the consensus rules. You started from the same like account balances, the same network, but you split off and create this other one that suddenly doesn't agree with everyone else. So that's what happened with Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Gold and all these Bitcoin forks that you might have heard about. Um, so I want to differentiate that from like a, an altcoin, which might have been, this is, I'm going to use the word fork again, but this is a different use of the word where they might have taken the code base of Bitcoin and forked the code and started with the same kind of software that you run, but they might have not started from the same network with the same history and the same blockchain. So they might change some of the blockchain parameters to you know, increase the interval that blocks are mined from 10 minutes to two minutes, like Litecoin did. Or you might change the total supply of the coin to whatever Dogecoin is. <laughs> it's a totally different supply curve of how many Dogecoin get issued in a given time frame. So those are altcoins that, that are forked from Bitcoin. So they're using the same code base, but they're tweaking it, but they're not fork, forking the network. They're just starting a fresh blockchain. Um, and so now I'll talk about side chains. So side chains are kind of like an altcoin. Like in the case of Liquid, they took the Bitcoin code base and they forked it and created uh, a new software called Elements, which is very similar to Bitcoin, but they changed a few things. They added confidential transactions. They changed the block time from 10 minutes to like a fixed one minute. They changed the whole mining mechanism. So instead of having people around the world competing to mine the next block and earn a block reward at 6.25 Bitcoins, with Liquid, um, there is no mining. It, the blocks are created by a fixed set of hand-picked uh, functionaries. These are nodes in the network that have been selected when the network started to kind of take turns creating the blocks and validating transactions. So. Bitcoin uh, Liquid is an open network in the sense that you can use the network for free. It's like Bitcoin, anyone can get an address. Anyone can even download the software and run a Liquid node on their own computer, join the network, You'll, your computer will start relaying transactions and blocks just like it would with Bitcoin. And yeah, you can get a, a wallet generate a private key and an address. And the way that transactions work are very similar to Bitcoin in the sense that you know you have your inputs and outputs. Uh, they have to total up to the same amount for the transaction to be valid. Um, it's very much like Bitcoin, except Yeah, except for the mining um, process. So in the way you get coins on the liquid network, like if they're called liquid bitcoins, would be instead of new liquid bitcoins being mined in this competitive process, uh, they get created by people staking or uh, taking in uh, regular Bitcoins. So the process for doing that is you tell your Liquid node or yeah, you download the Liquid software and you'd say, I want to do this uh, special pagan transaction 
where I'm going to create new liquid Bitcoins. And it gives you an address, a Bitcoin address, like a regular Bitcoin address to deposit to. So you can deposit however many regular Bitcoins you want there. Say I want to do half a Bitcoin. So I send my half a Bitcoin to this pig in deposit address. And after 100 blocks on the Bitcoin network, the original Bitcoin network, uh, that transaction is considered like irreversible. That's actually like way overkill. I don't know why it's 100 blocks. It seems like a lot. But yeah, it's, it makes sure that <laughs> no one's going to be able to double spend that thing or like 51% to reverse it or whatever. So yeah, you send your half of Bitcoin there. And then after those 100 blocks go through on the main net, the main Bitcoin network, then half the Bitcoin worth of liquid Bitcoin is created and sent to your liquid wallet. So anyone who wants to try this can like just go and download the elements code from GitHub and it's just like running a Bitcoin core node. You just you know, install it. You'll join the network. It'll sync the chain, the liquid chain, download all the blocks that have happened so far, download all the transactions, give you a wallet that's you know your wallet, that the private keys are stored in your wallet backup file on your computer. So it's very similar to Bitcoin in that sense that you know, you can take those private keys and store them on a hardware wallet. You could break them down on a piece of paper and you've got cold storage. So the sky's the limit. Well, I guess 21 million Bitcoins is the technical limit because there can only be as many liquid Bitcoins as there are real Bitcoins because of that pagan process, right? They're, they're one to one backed by real Bitcoin. I'm not sure what the number of liquid bitcoins in circulation is right now. I'll probably look it up here, but it's nowhere close to 21 million bitcoins. It's probably, I guess, close to 100 bitcoins. That was like a thousand. Maybe a thousand, yeah. One question Can you ask your note? Like the note that I am running knows how many bitcoin is liquid? Or... Oh, good question. Um, I don't think you could. Yeah, I haven't tried it though. I've tried like <clears throat> running a a one liner that you can run on your Bitcoin core node that audits the supply. You could probably do the same thing on Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, let's say there's a thousand liquid Bitcoin in circulation. Um, why would you want to use liquid Bitcoin instead of regular Bitcoin. Um, well, there's the aspect of the blocks are faster. So you can get a confirmation on the liquid network in one minute instead of 10 minutes on average, which, you know, is nice. It's, it's a little bit faster. It's not as fast as lightning, which is instant, but it can do larger amounts. So you don't have to worry about channel liquidity on liquid. Like I was saying, I used the example of half a Bitcoin, but you could put in 100 Bitcoin and get yourself 100 liquid Bitcoin and you know, then send it to another liquid address and it's moved in one minute. And it's after two confirmations on the network, it's considered like irreversible. So and good luck doing like a 50 Bitcoin transaction on Lightning. It's like <laughs> there's very few channels where you can make that transaction. Like we're on Liquid, it would be much easier to do that transaction. Yeah. It was originally actually built as like a kind of settlement layer for Bitcoin exchanges to use. So like in the fiat world, we have this concept of uh, interbank settlement. I think at the end of every business day, pretty much all the banks will total up their ledger from the day. So they kind of keep track of everyone's in, like withdrawals and deposits, the inflows and outflows. No actual money is moving like in the vaults or anything between these banks when you do all of these daily transactions. 
but they will settle um, through this like interbank network to say like, oh, I'm short. Um, like my reserve ratio is, is down. All these people withdrew out of our bank. So we need to like um, settle up with you and like we'll figure out the difference of our balance amongst all these banks after all this activity occurs. And then whoever is short and whoever's got a surplus, I guess, I'm not sure what happens then. I, maybe they lend money to each other or something. But yeah, amongst Bitcoin exchanges, same kind of thing. There might be all this trading activity where people are you know, sending wire transfers in and they're buying all these different coins on the exchange. And then some people are withdrawing fiat, some people are withdrawing crypto. At the end of the day, the exchanges, they run like a fractional reserve system, just like the banks do. So liquid was a way to, you know, have this inter exchange settlement network where they could do like these large um, transactions amongst each other to sort of, yes, settle their balances between each other and have it done in a trustless network where not any one of them is like in control of that network, but have it done in a way that's faster than Bitcoin and isn't subject to the Bitcoin fee market. So that's another advantage to Liquid right now. Besides the faster confirmations, the network is like pretty underutilized or very lowly utilized. So, um, Blocks are never full there right now. They might be in the future, but right now it's like it's like the good old days of Bitcoin. Like no one else is is filling up blocks. You can get your transactions through right away, and so you're only paying a few cents in transaction fees. I think the average is like one transaction per block or something. <laughs> yeah. There's times where it's had some activity, but yeah, it's pretty quiet. I think it's. It's like flying under the radar a lot. Like it's kind of like this hidden gem that is useful, but not a lot of people are using it. I'm pretty keen on it. Um, I guess the other main thing I haven't touched on with Liquid is the ability to issue new assets or tokens. So that's another thing they changed when they forked the Bitcoin code base was the ability to create like new coins, but on the same network. So the way that works is um, you'll do a special kind of issuance transaction and you can tell it some parameters of this new coin that you want to create. So you tell it the supply, like how many coins you're creating, the decimal precision or like how divisible those coins are going to be. So you could be up to eight decimal places like Bitcoin or you could have it like two decimal places if you want to like be like a fiat currency or something. Or you could do zero decimal places if it's like indivisible units. And then with the supply, if you if you just do like a supply of one, mm -hmm. then that's the unique like coin. There there aren't any other units. It's just this one of one token, so that would be considered an NFT. And you can add metadata to your tokens. So there's a, an asset registry, which is basically a GitHub repository with a big JSON file of all these metadata attributes, providing additional information about those tokens, like a human readable name and the domain name of whoever issued it. And they'll issue a challenge to the domain to prove that you own the domain. So you have to like serve a special file from the domain name, like, you know, prove that this Adam coin really did come from adamsalties.com. And then, yeah, all these tokens on the Liquid Network, they can be transacted in the same way that Liquid Bitcoin can. So if you have an, a Liquid address in your Liquid wallet, that you would receive liquid bitcoins to. It can also receive anyone's tokens. So I could create some atom coins, 
and send them to your liquid address, however many I want. I have to pay the fee in liquid Bitcoin still. So um, yeah, it is like three cents or something if you're doing an unconfidential liquid transaction or on the order of you know, like a thousand Satoshis, I guess, or about 50 cents, 40 cents. So if you got a confidential transaction. Um, I didn't get too much in depth about what a confidential transaction is. So um, this is one of the really cool like privacy features that Liquid has that even I think is like as good or or better than some of the like dedicated privacy coins like Monero and Zcash. Um, it uses uh, what's the word? Peterson commitments. <laughs> Peterson Peterson, yeah, and ring signatures, yeah, yeah. Some like advanced crypto, but I don't know. Yeah, like Gregory Maxwell and yeah, Peter Rolla and Adam Back and all the like blockstream or the Bitcoin like core devs kind of came up with this way of doing a transaction that um, the network can still verify that the right, that the inputs and outputs are totaling up properly without revealing what the amount of the outputs are or the asset that's being transacted. So if you look at the liquid, a confidential liquid transaction on the block explorer, um, you, you'll see like the address that's receiving the funds like you normally would in, in the output. And you can see the transaction and like the previous output index of where the money's coming from. But you can't tell how much money it is. And you can't even be sure if it's liquid Bitcoin that's moving or if it's like Atom coins or some other liquid <clears throat> asset that someone else has created. So, so it's, not, it's not completely blind, so you can still see like a few decimal points. Right? I'm not sure. I thought it was completely you know, yeah, No, it's not. I think it's like there's a, just due to the way that it works, it's like there's usually a few decimal points where you can still see. I don't think it can be completely blinded, but. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I might be right about that. But yeah, it's like within a range. Yeah, right? it's like it's a range. It's a range. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll pause for a second. Does anyone have any questions so far? I have a question about the, um, there are a, a limited number of signatories, right? Um, and they kind of act as like a federated mining consortium, right? Um, how does that work? Like, they do they just vote on, on blocks or do they elect leaders among them and then sign off or did they just like take a round robin it's round robin okay yeah so there's 15 of them right now and i don't even know what companies are who's behind them all. i'm not sure if it's well, public or not a lot of them are exchanges they're mostly uh i think exchanges mainly. so and when i was working at blockchain they were trying to switch to a system called dynafed which would basically allow them to have because right now they control all of the the signatories and and, and you, yeah, there's like 15, right? But they don't want to be like the main source of control over. They they want this to be an open system, so they were switching to a system that I don't know. If the, I think it's active done it, but it allowed um, that like the, the uh, federation to include new members and to to manage it but by themselves um, because before it was managed by blockchain, but now apparently it's all dynamic. Yeah, I think they just released that like a month ago. The ability. But the Dynafed thing, but I don't think they've actually changed the set of functionaries yet. But it's on the roadmap. But yeah, that was always like one of the goals, is like to make this an open system. It's not that they don't control. So, yeah. Is there then, for example, in the traditional financial world, there's been all these like endless takeovers, and eventually there's a consolidation of um, of all the banks and licenses, mm -hmm. and like, is there some would that uh, address how to 
for example, prevent like a concentration of signing keys in a, in a single entity. Let's say BitMEX goes around and buys up all their competitors, and then suddenly they control like half of the. From from my know, it's like it's pretty distributed in the exchanges that are involved in the federation. Um, but yeah, that definitely would be concerned if like they were all bought up. But there's 15 of them, so they, you know they have to be you know, distributed. Yeah, I mean, I guess once you saw a company buy up like five of them, you might be like, hmm, we need to change the set of signers now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it could be a concern. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, so like in Lightning, you can peg in in the sense of open the channel, commit to it. But you can always peg out in the sense you can always you know do a unilateral transaction or uh, a cooperative transaction for both teams. But how do you peg out in, in Liquid? Yeah. So that this is also a set of like handpicked nodes that are allowed to go in the reverse direction, convert the Liquid Bitcoin back into regular Bitcoin, like unpaid, yeah, paid out. Um, so I just recently got my pig out keys. So I've added to the list of like people that are allowed to do that. And the process for that was just going and saying like, yeah, I don't want to join the liquid membership. Like, I guess it's a... Uh, don't you need to be part of the Federation to do that? Yeah, so there's a distinction between the 15 functionaries that create and sign the blocks versus just liquid members, which are companies that have just like joined the governance board of the liquid network. So they get to vote on um, stuff like changing the functionaries. If that ever does come up, they would probably put that to a vote and then it's more than 50 people. There's like over 50 companies now that um, are liquid members. And out of those, I'm not sure how many have paid out keys, but it's more than just 15. So there's a bunch of companies that can. Because oh, I thought the, the, the 15, you need to get the multi state to peg out from the 15. So if you're saying that's not the case? Uh, yeah. You, so if I wanted to, let's say I pegged in some Bitcoin, like one Bitcoin, yeah. And I, who would I have to go to to, to get that back to the Bitcoin, like the main chain, so regular Bitcoin? Well, you don't have to do like an on-chain pickout first of all. So you could take that with the Bitcoin to an exchange like Bitfinex, or you could go to Coinos and you deposit your liquid Bitcoin there, and then they'll just let you withdraw regular Bitcoin, okay. and they won't necessarily do a pig out on the liquid network. They'll just have some yeah. supply yeah. of both and like some liquidity and they'll say, okay, well Yeah, so they're covering they're covering you in that sense, but they they're holding on to liquid Bitcoin, but they're covered, but they have the, a, a share of Bitcoin that's separate from your initial thing in that they're yeah. yeah. So yeah. they're just sitting on a stack of Bitcoin that they can give you and but if you pay your like, hundred liquid Bitcoin and you and you didn't have hundred Bitcoin. I couldn't I can withdraw that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's subject to their liquidity. Yeah. But if they ever hit a, a threshold where they're like, oh, that's too big for us to handle, then they could do an on chain take out. You could take your yeah. liquid Bitcoin, take it out, which only takes two blocks instead of 100. Oh, um, interesting. And so that's where it maybe requires those 15. If you want to do an actual on chain take out, you need the, the functionaries to do that. Well, they. They'll validate the pickup transaction, but like I was saying, anyone with a pickup key can do one of those. Oh. So like I, I can now do one. I haven't actually tried it yet. I've been trying to get my method not working. <laughs> In the Bitcoin world, who has to create the transaction that actually moves the Bitcoin? Imagine that I, you know, I'm like, okay, I want to take my liquid out of here. I create something that I have to give to the functionaries, so they do something on chain. Or my transaction is something that I go to Bitcoin and Bitcoin chain understands. No, no, like they, they have control over the Bitcoin that when I deposit it there, I don't own Bitcoin anymore. I own liquid. No, right. When you deposit that Bitcoin, it, it goes into a multi sig address controlled okay. by those 15 companies. Do you need permission from them to get that? Well, 
Okay. And it's usually like a KYC exchange. And all of them, all the fake outs, no, when I put uh, when I put Bitcoin into liquid, it's always a uh, multi sig of the same people all the time. So yeah. for example, if one of them misbehave, the other one can punish that one forever. So I am not thinking about one exchange buying like 15 of them, but um, 14 of them saying like, oh yeah, I don't like this actor. We just kick you out. Uh, we don't want to do business with you anymore. Um, your transactions were going to sign. <laughs> I think well, that's happened. theoretical because I don't think that's ever happened where there's been like a, you know, this where like, people it. disagree. Like, we we'll have to see what happens if they actually that actually happens. But in yeah. practice, they might also not know who's pegging off, right? So they don't know who they're punishing. Okay. Well, yeah, just just to know because then the the fourteen could actually keep creating transactions that are valid and they can like get in and out and more so, would be like two of them. It's made with like seven of the 15. I think it's like seven or fifteen or something, right? Or something. No, or eight, eight, of, eight, eight, or something. eight of the fifteen decide to just run away with all the big ones. There has to be eleven of the fifteen. Oh eleven, okay. Yeah, no, I know. But then there's scared. also like I think a backup key that's washing that. Right? Uh, there's like this like extreme oh, backup yeah. key that they have if like the function is so crazy. I feel like block, I think there's something where blockchain has like a oh shit key. Yeah, <laughs> so if the if the blocks stop if the blocks stop being generated like every minute, there's some kind of time lock or something yeah. where yeah. Blockstream then has this two of three like smaller multi sig that they they can use to um, yeah like to do whatever. Something these yeah. dynamics gonna hugely change with like music. You have like suddenly like 1500 keys. That, that might have been like the reason they started with 15. Yeah, I'm not sure. Just because that one. Yeah, I don't know the limit is on the. On the yeah, on the the it might or, be around that. I think, think it's around the price. It's a little bit of like how large it turns out. You say too, like, who knows? Like, I don't, I don't know the limit. Yeah. I think it's, I don't have I mean, no limit. Block, Blockstream could also always mine itself, and then that limit doesn't really matter. Right? It's not a, it's not a mm -hmm. consensus limit. It's just a good relay. And, and but they, yeah, and they cannot. No, I, yeah, I think they, and they will need to follow the Bitcoin core rules. They're going to pay again. And you said that the mining rules are different than Bitcoin. It's not only mining, but, it's just yeah. like multi sig Okay, yeah, because I was going to say, like, okay, but um, liquid uh, Bitcoin is backed up by normal Bitcoin. So what are they mining? They're not mining. Okay. So there's no new coins being okay. produced. So they take like state from other people because the, the those functionaries would. They're actually. I think they're anything. just operating altruistically, right? Well, I, I won't say that because like whatever is good for Bitcoin is good for Bitcoin exchanges. So Blockstream yeah. collects all the fees. Right? Blockstream collects the fees. I don't think that the functionaries are incentivized in that way. Maybe so, there's some other. Deal that they have, but I don't know what it is. Is it just time based? That the way that they're creating it's blocks? every one minute. Yeah. So they're just syncing for some standard time. They're and they're all yeah. agreed on that. Yeah. And they just take turns. Like each of the fifteen, you go next, and you make the next block, then you make the next block. And if one of them's offline or whatever, then it skips them. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. That's the basics. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But I, I do find it really interesting that there, you know, people think of like the L2 networks. So people think that like maybe Lightning and Liquid might be the same thing, the L2, L2 network, but not really in the sense that, you know, when you put money into Liquid, it's very different from putting money into Lightning. Because with Lightning, you can always go back to L1, Bitcoin L1, where it's not the same with Liquid. It's like you're kind of reliant more on the uh, of the federation, whereas you don't have to rely on that in Lightning. So I think, that, I think there's a very big distinction between L2 Liquid and L2 Lightning. It's like, in terms of you know side chain versus yeah so I, when I think of lightning I think of lightning is Bitcoin because all of all lightning is, is just Bitcoin transactions right whereas liquid is, is completely different software yeah that's a good distinction there's yeah pros and cons to both lightning with a side chain that every single channel has its own chain right like there you really have like another consensus state mm -hmm. And then there's stacks, which is not Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a 
fun discussion. I just think. Uh, one other thing I wanted to kind of talk about with Liquid is the atomic swap transactions. So I talked about like creating new assets, like my Atom coin, and with Liquid, you can do these transactions that have uh, multiple different assets as the inputs and outputs in a single transaction. So like with a Bitcoin transaction, I said the inputs need to total the outputs. So the money that you're spending needs to total the money that's being received by whoever you're sending it to. The same with Liquid, but those totals could be like, you know, I'm putting in uh, two inputs, one for one Bitcoin and another one for two Bitcoin, and then I'm breaking it up into three outputs for like one, one, and one. And then on top of that, I have like an input for 10 Atom coins, and then I'm sending that up five different addresses, doing like two Atom coins, two Atom, two, two, two. And so this one transaction can have, you know, Atom coins and liquid Bitcoin being sent, and potentially other assets like a uh, Canadian dollar liquid asset or US dollar, like US tethers. And the inputs don't all necessarily need to be from the same person who's like spending the money. So multiple different parties can contribute inputs to the transaction. So I could provide the atom coins and Chelsea could provide the Bitcoin to the transaction. And then I could be receiving some of the Bitcoin that she put in. And like Chris is receiving some of the Atom coin. But it's all done in this one transaction that is all or nothing, right? It's either going to be confirmed into the blockchain or it's not. It's one big transaction. It's one big transaction. Mm -hmm. like a coin join. So, so let's say I had like three LBT. Um, going to a specific address, but then I had like three atom coins with no, so it just goes to the miner. Like, would that mean the federation has three? Like, you know, in, you know what I'm saying? Like, in terms of if they were, if I was just getting dust, let's say I had like three atom coins without a specific, it was just going to the miner as change or as dust or as like as like a donation to the miner. Like, what does that mean? Does the federation have three atom coins? Like, how does that work? Because if you think about it, like, you know, in like in Bitcoin, if I if I send one Bitcoin to a specific address, but at, and my input is two Bitcoin. That means one Bitcoin is donated to the miner as as a, a mining fee. Yeah. What so happens if it, if it was assets instead of LBTC? The, the fees and liquid are explicit. So you can't have... You um, can't have added coins as a fee? Yeah. Okay. Only liquid Bitcoin is the fee. And it has its own dedicated output. It's not just whatever's left over. Okay. It's like explicitly specified. So I can't have like, I can't not specify an output for Adam coin. That always has to have that. It has to total the energy. And there's no such thing as dust with the assets because the, yeah, you can send as local as like one Satoshi of a liquid asset. Yeah. And that would be like your NFT, right? Yeah. You know, that's valid if there's no dust limit on Assets. There is some liquid Bitcoin. Like I have one GB55 coin out there somewhere. Like yeah. <laughs> but okay, so back to like this one transaction with all these multiple assets in it. That means that we can we can be swapping these assets, like trading, without having any counterparty risk, because neither one of us has to be the first person to send their asset. And we don't need to use a third party to like escrow for us. We can do it trustlessly by creating this single transaction that makes the swap. And um, we both provide our signatures to the inputs that we're providing. And then the transaction is done in like one fell swoop. So yeah, it's done atomically. Right? So it means if I wanted to buy Bitcoin from Leo and he's taking my US dollar tether token in exchange, we can construct this transaction where 
I put in like 10 tethers as an input, and he puts in a number of fraction of a Bitcoin, and we both sign it, and we broadcast it, and there's no way that like either one of us can back out on the deal. So this opens up a whole range of possibilities for doing decentralized finance, because you can basically have non-custodial exchange between all these different tokens without having to use like a centralized third-party exchange. So <clears throat> there's this thing called TDEX that I really like. Um, this is like open source software that anyone can, you know, you can run a node if you have a server, or you can just download a wallet app and use the client on like a mobile app. And what it lets you do is put up your liquid assets for sale in a market, and you can set your price and it'll construct these atomic swap transactions with anyone who wants to trade with you. So if I want to put up my atom coins for sale and ask for like 10 bitcoins for 10 atom coins, I can put that offer out there. I can even like run a, a market maker, right, where um, it changes the price and has like, you know, a, a gradient or like, yeah, it's not just like a fixed price, but it's a full like order book of all these different uh, atom coins available at different prices. And that can fluctuate, you, like you can take it to an external exchange source or something. And yeah, it allows anyone to come along and buy those atom coins with Bitcoin. And we're just doing it peer to peer, right, through the app. So there's no like company that we're both trusting to take our coins and make that exchange for us. It's done directly on the liquid network. Um, so Adam, why hasn't uh, Rare Toshi and Liquid taken over the NFT world considering built on the superior monetary network of Bitcoin? We're working on it. <laughs> I guess I should show Rare Toshi that yeah, problem. Uh, Yeah, so this is a marketplace that Chris and I have been building uh, for Blockstream. Blockstream contracted us. And it allows you to create liquid NFTs. So um, all of these artworks that are in the marketplace, they have a liquid asset that represents them. So this, this is a new asset for this one artwork that was created on the liquid network. And it goes into like your wallet on the site. There's like a web wallet built in. If you log in with an account. So you can like just upload any file you want, like a JPEG file or a video file. It'll it'll issue a new liquid asset and then put it in your wallet. And then it allows you to like set up uh, either a fixed price that you want to sell the artwork for in Bitcoin, or you can run an auction. And it'll do that atomic swap with the buyer. So if you like this artwork and you want to buy it, you could like come and, well, you'd have to sign in first, but you can make an offer of whatever you want to get it for. Uh, I just want to buy this one. <laughs> Splurge. Uh, 
Yeah. So yeah, I'll just wrap up with this. This is like one of these atomic swap transactions. So it's taking the the one cypherpunk artwork that I want to buy, and it's putting in my input of 0 0.002 Bitcoin, which I guess was whatever I had sitting in my wallet. And it's going to transfer that token to me and pay that to the artist. Actually, that's, oh, that's actually more than I had wanted to pay. <laughs> I was looking at the current bid. That's a little too rich for my blood right now. I thought I was going to be paying this much. I could have just outbid this guy. Good thing I checked. So yeah, now I'm offering <coughs> So my bid is placed. And yeah, that means that I proposed this atomic swap transaction to take that token for that artwork and give it to me and take my 0 0.0002 Bitcoin and give it to the artist. If the artist broadcasts this and, and signs his half of it, then uh, we're done, right? So this isn't going through like Rare Toshi as the intermediary. There's no like company running this site that's taking people's funds and custodying them for a while. It's doing this peer-to-peer -peer transaction directly between our two wallets that only we have the keys for. So, yeah, I think it's... I think the question everyone wants to know is how do we invest in Adam? <laughs> you can buy Adam Coin after the same day for a low, low price. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's actually not listed anywhere right now. <laughs> Put it up on <laughs> But yeah, I'll stop there because then over time. So thanks, guys. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any final questions before we stop the recording? Um, for the secret uh, amounts of uh, transactions, the private transactions, I think that they are cool. Um, a payout cannot be a secret one, right? If I want to recover my Bitcoin, uh, that in the liquid. That's right. Yeah, it's yeah. not secret. Okay. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we're going to have. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't want to uh, audit that you know, like the liquid. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's the leader and the lightning. You know, you're going back to me. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Sure. And uh, there is no UTXO management from the liquid. Um, owners beyond just payouts and pay-ins, or they do consolidations of coins, or you know, because if I want to follow <laughs> the transactions, can you actually audit that what they are doing is always started by a user, or I think you can audit all the pay-ins and pay out okay. but it's a good question. Like in terms of the assets, can you convert an asset back to Bitcoin? How does that work? The assets are never like backed by Bitcoin at all. So they're just generated yeah. by whoever creates them, however many they so want. You're, but you're converting like liquid Bitcoin into assets. Right? You're just you're you're paying a small fee in with the Bitcoin, but those assets are with an issuance transaction it's special where the inputs don't need to total the outputs really. Or the input yeah, is you like can, you can that's a parameter of that. Yeah, so like new outputs are created that didn't have any history of liquid Bitcoin before or anything. It's just a you new can't just asset. Create, you, but you can't just create like, you can't create an asset with a liquid Bitcoin. You just need enough to pay the transaction fee. But it's not like a colored coin where you're right, creating right. an existing output and like repurposing it. It's creating like a new output out of nothing. And it, it has like some, a type. That only that I can tell that this is not liquid, and that only exists in the liquid world. That has yeah. it. Yeah. There's no way to. Right. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. Yeah. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Cool. Now what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> I, just think, I just have an idea. What I want to put out there is, 
question. I don't know if you want to show it or not, because I think a lot of people have heard of it. I don't know how many people have used it. What about like a, a YVR or a Vancouver Bitcoin token that we can actually generate right now? And everyone, if you have a liquid wallet, could receive one. It's just a really fascinating concept to have one of these and then think about the future use cases of. So in a year from now, anybody who has like the Vancouver Bitcoiners token could get access to a thing. I think the idea of NFT tokens on Liquid is a fascinating concept. And you could use the Aqua Bitcoin wallet to do that. Right. Well, I'm biased. There's nothing about Coin OS. <laughs> I'm biased because I help work on the Aqua. Okay. But, uh, I think that's a great idea. And yeah, there's so much, uh, so much hype around NFTs, but um, I like the fact that it's on Liquid. It's more interesting. Yeah, I've always been like super like skeptical of NFTs just because it's built on well, most of them are built on Ethereum. And, like and it's like built on sand, right? Mm -hmm. on Ethereum. I, I I still kind of skeptical about NFTs, but the fact that it's on Liquid will be fine. I can maybe and well, maybe I'm okay with it. Um, so, um, I think we're at that part of society right now where most <laughs> Bitcoiners are not even aware that NFTs are possible with Liquid yet. So that's why I think this token idea is fascinating because it's like if all of a sudden you can't get access to a thing unless you have that NFT, but it's on Bitcoin, and it really gets your mind spinning about where the other NFT folks are in the Ethereum planet. Mm -hmm. All coin world. <laughs> okay. Then I guess the question is how many know, YVR BTC tokens should be generated? How many should there be in circulation ever? Oh. Say for example is to get into a meetup, the only way you can get in is if you have one, you might want to only have fifty in total ever. I feel like at this point we I think we need more people versus like trying to exclude people. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But the cell is that more people you made exclusive and then they start <laughs> Oh yeah, you make it exclusive <laughs> have a monster unit, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Like a nice number, round number, like a hundred or a thousand or something like that. Nice. Thousand? Yeah, I think a thousand. What's the symbol? Sure, thicker symbol. How about the lion? Is that on the, what would that be? I mean, like a, oh. like a three letter. It has to be three. Three or five. Three or five. YVR. Uh, B and B C or has to be three characters? Three to five. I think B and B C. Do we have a website? Mm -hmm. Um, just the Twitter handle. Uh it's Van Bitcoiners. <clears throat> we should get uh van uh bitcoiners dot com. We should. We do have decimal places. Indivisible, or <laughs> will we want to be decimals? Like, what what would it mean to be divisible? So we are doing a thousand. That's what I have right now. We're not going to do like a quadrillion division, are we? Like Bitcoin and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what does it mean to have a, like a division of a thousand for this meeting? You know, yeah, what's partial partial membership? Indivisible, I guess. Yeah. I like indivisible because then it's a fixed asset, yeah. and it's like we're the first thousand. I mean, if we could do like a second series. If we could hit a thousand people. <laughs> All right. Create a new class. Nice. <laughs> How big are the blocks in liquid? I have like infinite questions. Huh? So um, um, they're about ten times bigger than Bitcoin, but transaction the confidential transactions are about ten times bigger than Bitcoin transactions. So <laughs> roughly, they work out to supporting the same amount of transactions per block. Uh, yeah, Vancouver Bitcoiners, thousand tokens pending. Hmm. I'll take one. Hmm. Uh, yeah, give me your liquid address. I've got my aqua aqua wallet here. Or if anyone wants a CoinOS account, it's free to sign up. It takes two seconds to make a username and password. No install required. 
that's actually a really good point. Eh? Like I know multiple people using Coin OS because of that as an exchange for exchanging between you know, like Lightning and doing swaps and uh, Bitcoin in the Spanish community and they like it quite a lot. Congratulations by the way. Cool. <laughs>